A child of the post-war era in San Francisco, our next inductee started his career as an outstanding amateur player, winning the California State Amateur Championship back in 1951. And after serving in the Korean War, capturing it again in 1956. He grew up mentored by the likes of Byron Nelson and Ben Hogan. And the company he kept off the course included a roommate nicknamed Old Blue Eyes. His lifetime of achievement in the game included his win at the 1964 U.S. Open at Congressional and 35 years in the broadcast booth. Let's take a look at the iconic career of Ken Venturi. Until tonight, June 20th, 1964 was the day that defined Ken Venturi. His victory that sweltering, suffocating afternoon at Congressional Country Club was one of the most memorable, emotional, and heroic triumphs this game has ever known. A 36-hole finale that he nearly never finished, and moreover, was even advised between rounds by a doctor that he was suffering heat stroke, and that if he continued to play, it could be fatal. Kenny told the doctor that day, I've got nowhere else to go. So alas, he took slow, measured steps, the final 18 holes, even getting an assist and adding up his scorecard from Joe Dye, as Kenny was too disoriented at that point to add up the numbers. Since that historic day outside of Washington, D.C., Kenny has taken many slow, measured steps toward this ultimate coronation. His golf career was put on hold so that he could serve his country first. He was in the army, in Korea, and then Austria near the Russian border. And after leaving the military, he came closer to winning the Masters than any amateur ever has, holding the 54-hole lead in 1956. Still an amateur, there was the match at Cypress Point, teaming with Harvey Ward that famous day against Nelson and Hogan. Venturi has the honors and is after his 10th consecutive tournament round in the 60s. Once out on tour, he won in his first start in St. Paul. There would be 14 victories in all in a very short playing career. Ken Venturi playing his first tournament after a several month layoff because of an unusual circulatory illness. Injuries crippled the length of his playing days, most notably carpal tunnel syndrome that reduced him to about a 10-year window. Those injuries led to his next life, where most of us knew him as the voice that documented so many of the most important golf tournaments we ever watched. With us out on the course will be the 1964 United States Open champion and the 1964 Hartford Open champion, Ken Venturi. His years of commentating made him not only the longest analyst in American television golf history, but the longest running lead analyst we've ever had for any sport in our country's broadcast history. Great calls. Let me tell you, Gene Sauer made his for Burry to go to 17. Why not Dickie Pryor? Got a chance. Why not Dickie Pryor? This is a Cinderella story. This is unbelievable. He's going to have a hard time making five. I tell you, I've seen it all today. This is unbelievable. Heartfelt emotion. I've said many times, Pat, after the money has spent, the trophy lingers on, and the memory of that applause, Peter Jacobson will never forget. A knack for feeling the moment. What a round. What a player. Oh, beautiful. That tells it all right there. His work in television was legendary and the audience considered him their trusted friend. He's led a remarkable life, from captaining his country to a President's Cup victory in 2000, to just being the walking embodiment of the sport and all its virtues. So tonight we honor the son of Fred and Ethel, the father of Matt and Tim, husband of Kathleen, with the recognition that I know means the world to him. The greatest reward in life is to be remembered. And thank you for remembering me. May God bless you. And may God bless America.
Ken Venturi, uh, clearly a man that uh, let emotion take him to all those heights. It's a real gift uh, in this world of, uh, of broadcast sports. For 35 years, golf fans welcomed Ken Venturi and his broadcast partners in the CBS booths into their homes. Tonight, a man who was the last to share that booth with Ken is here to honor him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jim Nance. Wow. I just looked at that piece and felt like I was watching it from afar, even though I wrote it and narrated it. Uh, <laughs> to see the visuals again, it's pretty powerful. I love Ken Venturi. He's a friend and a mentor, and I'm heartbroken he's not standing here right now. I have nothing prepared to say. I was just going to wait till I got to this moment and just point out a few things. And I see Commissioner Fincham right here in front of me, for starters. Thank you for being so good to Ken, Commissioner, entrusting him with the captaincy of the President's Cup 2000 in the late stages of his career. It meant the world to him. It's a big deal. It's tremendous the way you recognized him and championed this very occasion for Kenny to be in this Hall of Fame, among with many others. Thank you, Tim, so much. And, you know, look, I think most people know Kenny's been ill for some time now. He's been in a hospital out in Palm Springs for two months. However, I'm going to tell you, the prognosis is still good. He, he can get through this. I really believe it in my heart. The countdown's been going on since early March. Can he get through the next couple of weeks? May 6th, always the target date. And there have been some steps forward and then a couple of steps back, all the while hoping he could be on this stage tonight. Jack Peter and the World Golf Hall of Fame, thank you for this tremendous treasure for our sport. I know if Kenny was here tonight, he would want to say to everyone involved in the game, honor the sport take care of the things that are important in this game that has the greatest soul of any sport that's ever been created. Let's treasure this World Golf Hall of Fame. Let's recognize its importance. Let's honor it. Ken would want people to always remember no one individual is bigger than the game. But I know that being recognized in golf immortality, if you will, the World Hall of Fame is something he could only dream of for a long, long time. So as he sits tonight out in Palm Springs, California, in intensive care tonight, but tracking to get out of there soon, and Jack and the World Golf Hall of Fame saying, Kenny, when you come out of this, next year you get to come here and make your acceptance speech. Here's how I look at it. He stood there between rounds on that 36-hole finale at Congressional, suffering from heat stroke. Doctors advised him to give up. He went out dazed and played, couldn't even add up his own scorecard before Joe Dye said, the numbers add up, Kenny, just sign it, and you're the U.S. Open winner. He made it through that. As a young boy, he had a stammering condition that was so severe, doctors told his mother he will never speak. He will never be able to say his own name. That's what drove him to golf, to sit on a range, beating balls, hearing himself in total clarity in his head. This is to win the U.S. Open. And he overcame that with great will and determination and again became the longest running lead analyst in the history of sports television. I believe that that young boy, Ken Venturi, and that champion golfer, Ken Venturi, is going to be here on this stage next year. And I can't wait to be here to see it. So tonight,
In the meantime, in the meantime, we need to put the crystal in the hands of the Venturi family. We need the fingerprints on the crystal. And it's my pleasure to bring to the stage to accept Kenny's induction into the World Golf Hall of Fame. His two boys that he loves more than anything in the world. And I know tonight he's gonna to be back home watching with Kathleen, his angel. Please welcome Matt and Tim Venturi. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight, and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Jimmy, I think my dad couldn't have asked for anyone more special to present this to him tonight. Not only are you a dear friend who he loves and someone who he cherished working alongside for those many years, but also as part of the CBS family, who was all so special to him. We're honored to be here to accept this award on his behalf. He, uh, this is such, a, such an important milestone, and we're sorry he can't be here. Uh, but we want to thank everyone who supported and were part of his being a recipient of this incredible honor. We also want to say thanks to the World Golf Hall of Fame, the good folks who have offered the opportunity for him to come back next year and be at this podium with Jimmy to do this. I know he looks forward to it and will really uh, uh, bask in the limelight. And finally, uh, we want to congratulate all the inductees. Uh, it's such a special night to be here with you all and want to congratulate the families of the inductees because we know how proud you are of them and to be part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Jimmy, and uh, Dad loves you. He's loved you, I'll tell you, he loves Jimmy. That's, um, when Dad did uh, receive the induction to the Hall of Fame, he, he had a twinkle in his eye. And that twinkle, every, he's there every day, every day when I see him, that same twinkle. And uh, I'm just so proud of him. And if he was here to speak tonight, on our behalf, we'll speak for him. But I know that he would end tonight by saying, God bless all of you, and God bless America. Thank you. Last fall during a ceremony.